My guest on today's episode is Mike Brevik. He is the owner of a couple of companies, but the one we're talking about today is called Dog Days Apparel. And I just met Mike not that long ago through a mutual acquaintance. And when we started talking about Dog Days as a company, and he was sharing with me his vision, which is all about resurrecting mascot logos as well as landmarks from communities um, that have gone by the wayside. So schools that have closed due to consolidation and no longer have a mascot. It is all about reigniting the local pride and kind of reinvigorating the legacy that either the mascot or these landmarks have left behind. Um, I was like, you're perfect for the talk show. And he's just, he's a bright, generous soul. He cares about how small towns um, think about their history, but also about how that can that local pride once it's kind of relit can light a fire under people to think about what's to come in the future he is such a cool guy this is such a cool business and literally every single one of you watching this episode if you have a mascot that no longer exists or you have a landmark that no longer exists you've got to listen to mike talk about this website and of course submit your proposal so he can create a custom piece of artwork just for you it's so much fun enjoy this episode Hey, Mike. Hi. I'm so pumped to have you here. Gosh, like as soon as you and I got off our first call together, I was like, this guy's got to come on the talk show. It was a good one. I, and we spent a lot, we spent a lot more time on the call than I anticipated. But I, I know. That, yeah. and, right. And through mutual connection too, which is also, I love to tell people like some of the best people I've met have come to me through a shared connection like that, which is always super fun. Exactly. Yep. So let's talk a little bit about hometown pride because okay. that is really what we're going to be focusing on for this little chat here. And I would love if you would share with the people that will watch this eventually. And again, most of the people that watch this are people from small towns, right? Right. So share a little bit about, well, let's actually back up. So you've got this cool, amazing new business. Do you want to tell us just a little bit about that? I'm calling it cool and amazing. So you don't have to like, Pat yourself on the back there. I think it's cool and amazing. Well, it's, it's in development, but um, uh, Dog Days Apparel is essentially, a, it's an apparel company that, um, yes, we do retro t-shirts, sweatshirts, those kinds of things, but it's all geared around kind of uplifting and, and building, you know, restoring legacy and building optimism in small towns. I mean, that's the whole point behind it. Um, we have yet to see some of these things come to fruition, but at the end of the day, that's the vehicle and that's the message we want to send with the brand. Yeah. Right. So how did this come to you? So tell the story, if you can remember the story you told me about, you know, what you've heard when you've gone back to your hometown, share a little bit about that. Cause that like, when you said that, I was just like, Oh yeah, that these are the things that I am trying to help people not, not fight, but maybe overcome, right. The mindsets that, yeah people overcome that in small towns yeah I, I you know I think being from a small town you go home and visit and you know you talk to your old friends family people that you know maybe you haven't seen in years and there's always a part of that conversation that turns into uh you know nothing ever changes around here this sucks or whatever that conversation is and it, it just the conversation is pretty stagnant sometimes I mean you get through your 30 40 seconds of pleasantries and all of a sudden we're kind of kind of talking about how nothing changes. And I feel like a big part of that, especially with small towns, and I think it's common, you know, with, with all small towns, but um, I think a big part of that is mindset. And I think it's it's kind of switching gears and, and kind of flipping the script on the topic and making it something a little bit more positive. And it's just something that always stood out to me. And it's, you know, honestly, it was part of a, a deterrent as to why I didn't go home as often because you have those conversations and it's kind of frustrating. It's kind of depressing in a way because you hate to see your small town dry up. Uh, you hate to see the people that, that live there not fully embrace what it possibly could be from a, a sustaining standpoint. And it just, you know, it just kind of something I thought about for a long time. And one of the things that, you know, always kind of stood out to me was, you know, there's got to be a way to kind of change that. And I don't know that I really even knew that when I, when I started this process, but how it started was, you know, just, I always wanted to do something that would be apparel driven because I have a background in graphic design and, and creativity and whatnot. And, 
you know, kind of started there. Well, what if, you know, what if we did designs and what if we kind of took the time and the effort to kind of resurrect mascots and logos of these schools and these, um, you know, these teams that are gone. Um, so for, for my hometown, school consolidation and, and kind of merging with other schools is a very common thing. And I think it's pretty common at all small towns because you're always yeah. fighting right. to stay alive and you're fighting to keep those numbers up where enrollment can sustain the school district and it just doesn't necessarily work out for small towns and even from a sports perspective they're they're fighting to get the numbers to put you know a nine man or 11 man football team together to get five decent basketball players or whatever so there's there's all these things happening and it's part of the reason why they work together and and merge and and do the things that they're doing which at the end of the day is a good thing but right. as part of that process or as, as a byproduct of the whole thing is you start to lose these uh, these little chunks of history and you start to lose the legacy and you start to lose the pieces of history that really matter to that town. And then it's, you know, what the town takes pride in. So for right. like me personally, it was the Twin Valley Tigers. And, you know, it'd be cool if we were still the Tigers, if we were able to sustain that all these years and whatnot, but that's not how it worked out. And that's kind of where it started. And I think the story I told you was that I had the idea and I wanted to kind of just get it rolling because I've been thinking about it for so long and kind of been, you know, all talk and no action. So I created a, a kind of a demo version of a Twin Valley Tigers retro tee and I wore it back uh, to my town festival, which is in the summer and it's, you know, kind of over a weekend thing. And I wore it up to the local uh, municipal bar and just went up there with the intention of just seeing old friends and just kind of having a good time. And during that process, I mean, I could tell people were looking at it while I was talking to them and it was definitely a point of attention, but right. at the same time, 35 people actually took action and either asked me where I got the shirt from or made mention of it. Or I even had some people say, you know, Hey, did you get that at Target or American Eagle? I mean, they thought, like I just got lucky and found like this Twin Valley Tigers retro. <laughs> That's what's really funny. Were you like, no, retailer. Target didn't make this. Yeah. Like, this and is I, and I <laughs> and I said I I did say you know no I made this, but I didn't really tell them why I was doing it or right. what the motivation was because at that point I'm not even sure if I knew what the motivation was. It was more just of a test for me to see if I was onto something. Mm -hmm. Um. So that worked out pretty well. The next day, um, next week, I should say, I reached out to a friend of mine who uh, his wife is from Euland, Minnesota. And I just kind of asked her to do the same thing. I said, you know, hey, if I make up a shirt for you and your kids and whatnot, would you wear it, you know, uptown to the parade or to the bar or whatever, just that weekend. And she was glad to do it and kind of the same reaction. You know, she had a lot of people that mentioned it to her, asked her about it. Where did you get it? That kind of thing. So at that point, for me, it was kind of proof of concept that yep. there's enough interest there and there's enough kind of love of history where people are kind of taking action and, and asking, which is which is weird because I wear T-shirts all the time and nobody asked me about my shirt. But on that day, people were asking. So that was, for me, kind of an indicator. Right. And it's okay. So love, love, love that story. I love the whole concept so much. And I think um, it might be partly because we just came off my, my town summer festival. I yep. had a major class reunion that occurred. A lot of my friends came back and you know, we, I don't feel like we see as much of that kind of down and depressive attitude necessarily towards our community. I think Oaks is actually a thriving small town but there's pockets of it. You know, we talked about this a little bit where, you know, if you ask somebody that works at even any of the gas stations, there's a chance that they may tell you there's nothing to do here. Like if you are traveling and you're stopping by and you ask that question and they say, oh yeah, there's nothing going on here. And that is something I'm actively, I want to try to help us turn that tide because I think like you said, it's the worst thing in the world to ask local people what they think about their town or what's going on in their town. And it's all negative because why on earth would anybody else want to move there if you live here and you hate it that much, right? Right. And it might be, you know, there's parts of it that's probably maybe just a handful of individuals and it's, it's maybe just one town versus this town because one yeah. town has less going on. And, but overall, right. 
like I just look at it from the perspective of we got to get everybody drinking the Kool-Aid, um, especially if you're a town that has, you know, a chance to sustain and actually bring people in and grow. And, you know, cause there are, there are some really nice little towns in this area that yeah. struggle because there's just not a lot going on. And, and, you know, what if we could, what if we could change that? Right. And I think what I love that you're doing is you're tapping into that, that the feeling of nostalgia, which yeah. is, really something that um, if people had a good experience growing up, because I, I totally respect the fact that not everybody had a good growing up experience in a small town. I, I get that. They'll never be our target audience anyway then, right? Like they're never going to want to come back. They don't have any desire to reminisce. Like they're over it and that's fine. But for the most part, the people that had a beautiful experience in one way or another, they feel very nostalgic and they like to think back on the experiences that they had and you're giving them a visceral way to do that. So, okay. So mascots and like with the schools that have closed is one thing. What else has this kind of evolved into? Because like our school, we are still the Oaks tornadoes. I think I told you like we will be hopefully till the end of time. Um, but what other kind of spinoff things are you are optional or options for people that are in small towns? Well, right, right now the whole theme is is kind of centered around the idea of lost legacy, lost memory, those kinds of things. So, like, it is the mascots primarily for school consolidated, you know, situations and whatnot. It's it's also like, uh, you know, uh, lake resorts. Like, I used to go to a, a lake resort at my parents' lake when I was a kid um, called Evergreen. And it doesn't exist anymore. And I have a lot of friends who used to go there. A lot of people used to come in and, you know, rent a cabin for the week and all these kinds of things. So it's kind of that mindset, too, of just capturing, you know, kind of the memories of summer and maybe a, a family type place where you used to to go as a, as a group. Um, the other thing, the big one that I'm, I'm pretty excited about now that I've been doing a lot of research on is landmarks. Yeah. Every town has, you know, there's certain business or landmark of... You know, maybe it was an old, like for me, it was, I worked at a movie in a parts store when I was in high school and I don't know, I didn't think it was as cool at the time, but I miss it. It's not there anymore. It's, it's pretty cool now. Um, every town seemed to have some kind of a bowling alley and ice cream shop. You know, during the 1980s, it was arcades. You know, we had a little dirty, dingy arcade in, in my hometown called uh, Jim's Jungle and it was super cool and whatever for good or bad, I remember all the good stuff with it, but, but to me, that's, you know, that's a retro a t-shirt idea that would be pretty neat. Yeah. Um, for towns like yours where there's never been a consolidation, I think there's a lot of opportunity for the landmark piece or even the, the if it's Lake Country or whatever, right. but I think there's also opportunity in even doing the retro versions of these logos. Um, to my knowledge, when, when I was younger and, you know, grew up in the 80s and 90s and whatnot, um, Jostens is still a thing. They come around and do the rings and whatnot. We were just talking about this. Like they, he came, yeah. the rep came around to our school, like, you know, a month or whatever before school is out. And I was like, Jostens is still a thing. Yeah. It's still a thing. Back in the day, they had these really thick books that had clip art in them. And that's where you pulled your, your, your you, know, you cut out your twin Valley tiger, or your Gary bulldog or whatever it was. And then, you know, with overhead projectors or whatever, that's how you basically blew it up on the gym wall or whatever it was because, you know, computers and, you know, Googling mascots wasn't a thing. Yeah. So in a lot of cases, there were like versions of logos that maybe people didn't even realize because yeah. they were whatever they were. And every time the Jostens book came back around with a newer, cooler logo, they just got their scissors out, cut it out, and they moved on with something else you know, rebranding and all this idea of, you know, creating new, um, new brands or evolving a brand really wasn't a thing back then. It was, you know, let's see what Justin's got this year. So there might be, you know, for a town like yours, that's never consolidated. Maybe there's, maybe there's a retro version line of, of the logo the evolution of what logos pass through that school. I mean, that'd be kind well, of neat. I think, I think there's, it's funny that you're talking class rings. I totally would have brought mine and like flashed it for the camera if I had known that we were going to get on the topic of class rings because I totally have one. Yep. Um, but I think like our school used to have a crest. That's what they called it, right? The Oaks yep. crest. 
And I don't, I mean, I haven't, I should ask a parent now because my kids aren't young. They're not old enough to be seniors. So I don't, I haven't seen that what Jocelyn's brings around, but like, I don't know if the Oaks crest is something still, it was our, our school crest. I think I'm, it was considered retro when I graduated and I put it on my class ring. Um, yeah, and, and where you'd find that and where yeah, I've had cool. people actually send me submissions. Mm -hmm. So on our website, we have a form on there where basically you can submit your logo and I ask for some details about the history so I can double check the facts and the authenticity and then try to get as close as I can to recreating it. But right. within that process, I've actually had people just you know, take photos from their old yearbooks. So like yeah. that crest you're talking about, or even yeah. versions of logos, they would be able to find probably a lot of those different things by even looking in their old yearbooks. Cause a lot of people have that stuff. Right. So what I'm, what I'm loving about this is right now you're kind of, you're getting into not ahead. You're not getting ahead. You're just getting into how people can actually access this. So for sure in the notes, I'll drop all the links. I'll drop the link to your site, but essentially Anybody that is interested in this, and like right away I said to you, I'm just going to name her, my friend Missy. So I'm going to make sure she watches this because she was name dropped in this episode. She's from this tiny little town, you know, just, you know, not far from us, just inside South Dakota. And they consolidated their whole school, like shut down, right? I don't even remember how many years ago, but she is like the most nostalgic person I I personally know like everything triggers memories for her. And when you were talking, I was like, she would love this so hard. Like she would be all about this. So it's cool to know that that's essentially all they have to do. And right now, if I would go out and submit something, whether it was a landmark, in my case, it'd be probably a landmark, right? Yeah. Um, and you ask for some information, there is no charge at all for the development of the custom artwork, correct? Uh, no, just, and, and honestly, the answer is no, but, simply because I'm trying to fill that pipeline and get people excited about it. But yeah. at the same time, I, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't do it for just about anybody. The only bottleneck is the time it takes to do it and kind of the fact checking um, because I want it to be highly authentic and I want it to be factual. And I do go through a process of researching either whether it's the landmark or the school or whatever, just to make sure I'm getting it right. Right. And to just create logos and artwork and stuff. I'm not saying that's easy, but I could do that, you know, pretty quickly without actually having to check the facts. But this whole, this whole brand is about accuracy and authenticity. So I do take that time to do the research so that when that shirt launches, I'm hoping to trigger with that much more people really. And I think I mentioned this the other day, I've actually had people, you know, comment on what's there already and basically uh, communicate to me that it's exactly like they remembered, which is kind of impossible because everything's custom created. <laughs> right. But, but whatever, whatever we did, we did it right because it triggered a memory for them that made them look at that and go, oh my God, that's it. That was it, yeah. And well, and the other thing too well, is it takes time because the other thing that you're, you're doing really carefully, which I think is beautiful, is it's not, just, it's not like you just take the information and then create artwork, you're actually telling the story of it as well, right? So there's like a little blurb or whatever word you would use to describe basically the story that that you write up to accompany the the artwork, which is just really cool. So it's, it is not, it isn't just visually appealing, right? There's, there's the story that people can get wrapped back into and that's what triggers all the feelings and creates right. nostalgia. And I just think it's so cool. I think I'd shared with you that what was coming to my mind were some of the new businesses that are in town that there used to be something entirely different in its place and that that business is just gone now. Right. And you had, you know, it was, so I was telling you about the filling station on the corner where a bank now sits. I remember mm -hmm. we used to go in there and they would sell us the giant freeze pops. Like that was what I remember going in there to get because obviously yeah. I didn't put gas in anything. I was a kid. But, you know, just those little memories, it's just, it's crazy. The yeah. stuff that, that'll conjure up. I, I'm really excited to share this with kind of the world because I just think, and I can't wait to keep asking because Oaks friends, I'm going to be asking all of you, like, what's the, what are the landmarks? What's the legacy things we need to have in design for us? Because I just think yeah. that's cool. And, and, and it, it, it's worth mentioning too that the t-shirts are the vehicle of the brand and it's what it is. 
but we're really in the business of restoring legacy and it's about optimism. It's about those things. The Mm -hmm. t-shirts are just the vehicle. I mean, we have to sell t-shirts to get the message out there and to get, you know, kind of the brand off the ground. So it's kind of a a double edged uh, sword in a way, but um, anybody can sell t-shirts. I mean, there's a lot of t-shirt companies out there, but this one is, this one's about restoring legacy. And if everything goes the way, you know, we, we hope it does then you know eventually maybe we can do more so yeah well so tell me a little bit more and the readers or viewers a little bit more about so like besides the fact that you had proof of concept when you wore your own t-shirt back to twin valley talk a little bit because one of the things you commented on was just the change of the tenor of the conversation like you had noticed that everybody was you know kind of down and that was kind of depressing to you so you go and you wear this t-shirt Suddenly people are asking you about it, but not just that. What what other kind of, there was the byproduct of it, right? That you kind of went, oh, this yeah. might actually be a thing. And it wasn't really, I mean, I should, I should clarify too. Like it's not that, you know, the conversation is always a downer. It's just, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of like when people talk about the weather. Right. You know, it's like, I don't have anything to say. So I kind of jump to my go-to, which is yep. what's newer around here and it it instantly kind of turns into that routine conversation and that's where some of that I don't even want to say negativity but that's where some of the kind of the melancholy conversation starts to happen and to to your question where it where it kind of threw a ripple effect into the into the routine was you know oh my god where'd you get that shirt tell me about that And, and all of a sudden it started to turn into more of a a positive conversation around whatever was on that shirt. Like one of the questions that I get a lot and I got specifically on that, that night on that test phase of mine was, Oh, you should make one that says 1977 on it. So people started to bring up the years of, Oh, it'd be really cool if you had a 1985 version. And, and what sparked from that was just the conversation of, well, yeah, well who graduated in 85? Oh yeah. It was this person. And, and just the snowball effect of, kind of where these conversations went all kind of springboarded off this shirt. Which yeah. is kind of weird. Well, and so, that's what's so cool about it. Yeah. It's, like, it's almost like um, the same impact as, so there were several reunions that happened, you know, there are that happen every year, right? Every single year there's classes that have reunions. Um, but because this was a reunion year for me, um, then my mom's class also had a reunion, like they grouped them together. And what was cool is you just start, people start naturally asking like those kinds of questions like, oh yeah, so who did you graduate with? And what about this person? What about that person? And then they talk about sports and all those things. It's almost like, it's almost like a reunion in and of itself, just because you're wearing a shirt, which is, I think it's so cool. And yeah, I want to be careful with that too. I don't want to make it sound like, you know, you went back to Twin Valley and they were all just negative and horrible and pessimistic. But I do think naturally, like you said, kind of the you run out of the small talk and then everybody kind of has their go-to questions and then it gets, it either gets flat or, you know, I, I said to you that I think sometimes in small towns, like I'm back in my hometown now, I've been back for 11 years. When I first moved back here, yeah, the first time that like my friends came back to visit me here, I think I was harboring a little bit of that embarrassment or shame. I struggled with that a little bit and not for any reason other than, I just felt like, does it say something specific about me that I live here now instead of even Fargo or Minneapolis or completely far away? You know, does it mean that I'm somehow squandering my potential or something because I live, I live here now. And so sometimes I think that is our own internal stuff that comes up that makes us talk like that. Um, But I think to the, the big picture, we constantly need to be thinking about how we talk about our small town because it speaks volumes about, you know, whether it's progressing, whether it's growing, whether it's going to be sustainable for the next five, 10, 20 years. And then you'd like, you never know. What if your classmate had a really cool opportunity and they talked all about all the amazing things that were available in Twin Valley. They have no way of knowing if maybe they couldn't hook you to come back. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's it's. Yeah, every, that's every town has some cool stuff going on. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I don't know if we always start with that in the conversation. I don't think we do. Yeah. And I think that it's just the way we're wired is to point out what's not, 
not going well, but yeah. I really want, I hope, I love that you're intentionally trying to create a way that people say like, no, look at this. Like this is, and again, to spark the interest and to spark the, the memory making. Cause then the question becomes what's going on right now that would be on a shirt in 10 years or 15 yeah. years. Like well, what yeah, are, even when it trudges up as far as other memories or other uh, logos and stuff. Cause uh, the, the friend of mine, his, his wife that wore it back to Yulin, she came back with basically, yeah, the same experience that I had, but she also said, hey, my mom wants to know when you're going to do a Yulin Panthers one. And I'm like, wait, who are the Yulin Panthers? And she's like, yeah, the Yulin Panthers were up until when she was in high school and whatever. And I'm like, okay, so then what was Hitter Doll? Well, they were the Hitter Doll Vikings. And, of course, I just added those to the list because I'm like, sweet, I didn't even know that. That yeah. was before my time. So somewhere in her conversation with her mother and whoever else was there, all of a sudden they were talking about, you know, the Yulin Panthers, Hitterdahl Vikings, uh, what was what and who was went to school here. And it just changed it. It just, it, it's that ripple effect of conversation just kind of takes a left turn and all of a sudden we're not small talking anymore. It's, right. it's just different. Yeah. And it feels good. It's yeah. all based on something that's a shared positive memory. And you're just thinking about something. So I think I had mentioned to you that over the weekend, I took my kids to our historical museum. Yep. Did I mention that to you? You did. Yep. We're, we're walking through. And like one of the things even now that's standing out in my mind is like, we used to have a bugle corps, like horns. Like there was a guy that led the bugle corps. I mean, I don't know when that went away, but a long, long time ago, but there are people that live in the community today that I bet were a part of it. Yeah. So like, that's something you just think about, like with the things you might've been involved in, the groups that used to exist here that really did a lot of stuff and now they're gone, but had years and years and years of people that were participants in it. You know, those are the kinds of things that people remember really fondly. Even me, I'll just, this suddenly just occurred to me, like we had something called um, show choir. Yeah. And we put on a cafe concert and sequins and dancing and all the things like it was amazing. I loved it so yeah. much been gone for a long long time yep. so yeah I mean I think once you start really thinking about it there's all sorts of things that hold a lot of memory and value for you yeah and, and part of all this is I said, I said this the other day too but it's also cloaked in this idea of you know like I said the shirts are just the vehicle but if you go out to the mall or wherever you're going to go it's pretty easy to see I don't know a couple hundred people wearing retro t-shirts Right. So the idea is that, well, what if the retro t-shirt actually had a meaning behind it? And how cool would that be? Because it doesn't have to mean anything if it's a, just a cool shirt. But at the same time, what if it did? What if right. somebody could say, hey, I really like your shirt. And all of a sudden you can go, wow, actually my dad was, or my great grandpa was part of the Bugle Corps in Oaks, North Dakota. And this is what right. it is. All of a sudden it's like this weird, fun story where people are like, wait, what? You know, tell me more. Right. That's what's kind of cool about it. Yeah. So yeah. like keeping the barrier low as to how you qualify or don't qualify up for a dog day's design, it's it's pretty low because at this point, I don't see why we wouldn't do all of them. Right. Oh, so. it's fantastic. Well, and I love so much that, you know, ultimately that's what this is about is that rekindling of hometown pride. Yeah. Or community pride or landmark pride or whatever it is you want to call it but it's about it's about restoring legacy and it's it, I'm a huge sucker for a brands of purpose mm -hmm. I, mean, I like my Nikes and I like my Under Armors and those kinds of things but even more than that I love my life is good I love my mm -hmm. Tom shoes I love I love Tikta I love brands that kind of put it out there that yes you know doing what we do is a vehicle but at the end of the day it's about purpose Right. So. Right. Well, I cannot wait to watch where Dog Day's apparel goes. I can't wait to source our first Oaks landmark. Like I'm going to source one for you. We'll get one up on the website. Awesome. Yeah. And I just, I seriously wish you the best of luck and I hope this blows up and becomes so crazy. You don't know what to do with yourself. I, I hope so. And, and it, it could easily be a national thing. It really could. Oh, no question. So no question. So. so thanks so much for coming on, Mike. It was awesome to have yeah, you. Anytime. Appreciate it. Like me, you return to your hometown. Maybe it was two years later. Maybe it was six months later. Maybe it's been decades later. 
But no matter what, you're considered a boomerang. You're somebody that left and came back. And with that comes all the feelings of uncertainty about will they accept me as who I am now? Are they going to get that I'm a grown person? It's quite tricky. And so I've created a small town survival kit just for you in mind as a returner. Check it out. It is bound to make you feel less lonely, less isolated, and uh, not as crazy as you feel like you are. Thank you.